So we, we are getting feedback absolutely all the time and make those systems safer. Senator Moran. Chairman, thank you. Um, Dr. Jensen, you say that kids in China aren't rushing to join the army and that Russia tech, Russian tech workers fled the country to avoid fighting the unjust war in Ukraine. Uh, Senator Warner and I uh, have introduced over the years uh, a startup act designed to create greater entrepreneurial environment in the United States, but it includes the creation of a STEM visa that would allow immigrants with advanced, advanced STEM degrees to stay in the U.S. as long as they remain engaged in the STEM field. The indication is workforce is hugely important. Let me ask, though, um, when you say what you said, give me some ideas of what you think about how opening the pathway for bright minds would benefit the U.S. in development of AI, and at the same time, depending on where they come from, perhaps actually hindering our adversaries. Anytime you bring people in, as you well know, right, when you bring someone into a skiff, you always assume risk. So the question becomes is what procedures do you put in place to analyze the risk versus the trade-off of exchanging that information and honing someone's ability to make a time-sensitive decision? I tend to view immigration, especially with people with high STEM backgrounds, as an outstanding American tradition. And, and the, don't just give us your tired and your poor and your sick. Give us your brilliant people who want to come here and make the world a better place. Now, how we integrate them into uh, national service, I think, is a really extension to what you're talking about. Um, how do we make them see that we're a country that believes in service? and it believes it service from the local to the national level and encouraging that. Now, does that mean everyone who was maybe has a cousin in the PLA gets a top secret clearance? No, but there's still a lot of ways people can serve, whether in uniform or whether in the government or our society writ large. And frankly, the, the smarter people we have to look at this critical moment in history, bring them. Uh, thank you. Um Dr. Lacoon, I think I'll address this to you. I'm, I'm the lead Republican on a subcommittee that appropriates money for the Department of Commerce, Justice, and Science. And uh, one of the efforts that the NSF has is the National Artificial Intelligence Research Institute program. Uh, I'd be glad to hear you or any of our panelists uh, critique or uh, praise the outcomes or the uh, capabilities uh, of that program and how do we work to see that that program fits in with the majority of research which is done in the private sector? Uh, Senator, this is a, a great question. As uh, a person who has one foot in academia and one in industry, uh, what we're observing today is that academia, um, when it comes to AI research, is in a bit of a, of a, of a bind because of the lack of computing resources. So with one thing I, I believe is, is in this bill is to provide infrastructure, computing infrastructure for, um, for academics and other uh, non-commercial scientists uh, to make progress, which I think is probably the best use of money you can, you can have. Um, another one would possibly be um, the, the, the f favoring the free exchange of information and idea to basically improve the diffusion process between industry and academia. Um, in, uh, in, in, in some countries, in European, some European countries, there are programs that allow uh, PhD students to have residency in industry, not just an internship, but spend a significant amount of time, like two or three years, during their PhD. Um, and we actually at Meta, we've established programs of this type with bilateral agreements with various universities across the US because it was so successful um, in Europe that we, we tried to translate it here. If there was some help from the government for this, that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, last thing is um, access to data. Uh, so this is something that uh, uh, Dr. Jensen mentioned uh, in a different context, but um, uh, certainly research in uh, healthcare, for example, in medicine uh, could be greatly improved if researchers had uh, uh, better access to data, which is currently mostly kept private for various reasons, complicated legal reasons, uh, that perhaps uh, Congress could help uh, resolve. Thank you. I'm going to try to get one more question in. Uh, tell me about how uh, custom AI models off the shelf, uh, how, how do they fit together? How, how can the government best combine commercial 
uh, off-the-shelf and custom AI technologies to ensure that government is fully leveraging AI capabilities, particularly in the intelligence community. Uh, Senator, I think um, there is the current state of affair in the AI marketplace, and there is where I think it's going, which is a, a bit of a guess. Uh, and where I think it's going is that it's going to be a little bit like the internet in the sense that there's going to be common platforms that are essentially open source, produced by companies like Meta and others, possibly, uh, with contributions from academia, et cetera. On top of those platforms, commercial products would be produced, which may not necessarily be open source. They may be commercial in various ways. And there will be uh, customized, fine-tuned for particular applications, whether it is in government, in education, in industry, manufacturing, services, uh, entertainment, um, you name it. Uh, so that's, I think, the model of the future. This is the type of model we're observing today in uh, various domains in, the, in software, certainly uh, on the internet. Um, that's where I think it's going. Thank you. Thank you all. And now to the author of the choke theory is Dr. Jensen.